Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and there's a very weird glow going on here. Woo! Still, my face looks weird. Anyway, uh, you'll just have to put up with it. Um, I'm excited to be here. Today we're gonna be sewing a cozy flannel blanket. I'm making it with fun Christmas fabric. But I've also sewed lots of these with baby um, flannel. So join me. Let's make a, a really fun blanket. Let me go ahead and get my um, shears done here and then we'll go ahead and get started. I am excited to be here with you guys today and I'm um, excited that you're here. So for those of you just joining, we're going to be sewing a cozy uh, flannel blanket. I'm gonna be making it out of Christmas fabric um, because tis the season. Uh, not really, but you know, I feel like, why not? We're moving on, it's Christmas. Um, Thanksgiving, of course, will get its time, but I am sewing for Christmas and loving it. So uh, this cozy flannel blanket, I'm making out of Christmas fabric because I was at Joan Fabric the other day buying flannel that was on sale and this gorgeous Christmas fabric called my name. So I decided to make this quilt out of Christmas fabric and, um, just a second, I'm trying to do two things at once. And um, I'm also prepping for It's So Easy. So all those things. And um, so this type of flannel blanket is gonna be one of my um, It's So Easy segments when I go film in December. But I just realized I have sewn many, many, many of these um, flannel blankets but we don't currently have any in our home and when I go for it to film it's so easy I work on a project but I also need to have a finished product example there and like I said I realized I don't have any of these finished I have lots of other blankets and quilts and things that I've made but none um, of this particular one so I decided that I would make one and then when I saw this fabric, I thought I'm gonna make one out of this Christmas fabric and we can keep it in our couch in our living room over Christmas and it can be fun decoration as well as then I can take it with me when I go film. So all that to say, I have linked the tutorial that I am using um, in the description of this video. If you wanna click through and check out sort of a baby version of this, it is my go-to favorite baby quilt because it sews up actually pretty quickly, um, unlike some of my other ones that I actually really love but take are really time consuming. So I started this one this morning. We're gonna work on it a bit more and then I'll finish it up and I'll show you the results next week, but it's gonna be fun, so all right. I'm gonna focus here for one minute. I'm almost I'm ready to get sewing and show you what I've been working on. So say hi, let me know where you're watching from. Um, hopefully this, this is a distraction from everything going on in the world today, uh, especially in the US, and um, that you are here to just enjoy a fun tutorial because that's what I'm going to do. So, um, All right. Check, check, check. All right, so let me show you what I worked on this morning to get this quilt sort of prepped and ready to go. Um, to show you guys. So, and like I said, I'm filming this for It's So Easy and I needed an example quilt because I currently don't own any of these even though I've sewed many, many, many over the years. So I decided to make a Christmas quilt because why not, Christmas is coming and I found fun fabric at Joanne Fabric that um, was really cute. So when I go film for It's So Easy, I will be taking these cute flannels and sewing a more baby kid version of this quilt, all right? So 
I had this dinosaur fabric and I went to match it and I found four other fabrics. So I think at least five to six different fabrics are um, important. And if you're making a twin size, the, what, the fabric needs are in the post. So click through the link in the description of this video to find out exactly how much fabric you used. I, for, I'm making kind of a lap version. I'm going to make it five squares by six squares and that will make sense here in a moment. And I bought a yard of five different fabrics and I do have a little bit left over. So it could be even larger, um, but that's where I started. So look at this fun Christmas fabric. Isn't that so cute? So I have started this quilt and um, we're gonna work on it again more today, but I'm loving, so it has, you know, these animals that have the buffalo check and plaid check on them. And then Joanne had the actual plaid that goes with it. So, and I have two animal prints and then three different plaids. So I'm super excited about this. I think it's adorable. So this is the width. It will be five squares wide and finished will be six squares long. So I'm making it with 30, 30 um, flannel squares. And again, the description in the link of this video will take you to, um, sorry, excuse me, text message, will take you to the full tutorial that gives you all the directions for putting this together, including cutting instructions and um, fabric needs and all of that. So let me just, I'm gonna show you how to put it together and kind of how I sew it and um, you'll get an idea of it, but then, you know, the actual nitty gritty details, you'll probably have to click through to find those because I want you to remember to tell you all those things. So um, you want to cut squares of flannel, exhibit A, and squares of um, batting. I'm using thin, I have a little bit left of this polyester batting, but I have this really pretty organic cotton batting as well that I'm using. So, and it is thin because two layers of flannel is already pretty thick. Um, so you could use thicker batting if you want it to be a warmer quilt, but I'm just adding a little bit of um, warmth between the layers and so I'm using thin batting. So in general, you wanna cut your squares and you wanna cut your squares and these squares are two inches bigger than these squares. Okay, again, very general. You're gonna to have to click through to find the actual details on this, and but I'm gonna give you what I can and hopefully it will make sense, okay? So I cut these squares 10 by 10, which two inches smaller, these squares are eight by eight, okay? So squares, batting, that's how you get started. Again, I'm making this out of five yards of fabric of five different colors and it will be a lap slash crib size quilt. So you might need a little bit more if you're gonna have a bigger quilt. Now, the post goes into more details about this, but you can see these squares of fabric show on both sides. You don't have a quilt back that is solid because we quilt as we go, which will make sense in just a moment. Um, but so to do that, you have to think about what pattern and design you want when you're cutting your squares. I just decided for this one to keep it really simple by sewing the same two squares together. Okay, so small animals, small animals. So each of my squares assembly, which I will do here in a moment, are the same on both sides. If you look at the baby quilt that I made in the post, you'll see that the design on the front was different than the design on the back. So I had to think through as I was sewing the squares together, what was the front side, what was the back side, and I sketched it all out to create a design. So um, this is gonna be a more scattered design. In fact, I just decided that each row, each row will have one of each square, one of each square, and I'm alternating. So you can see, you know, the red buffalo moves one over, the deer print moves one over. So that's all I'm doing. Each row will have one of each square, but you can get into it and create lots of different designs and you can create a back and a front that have different designs if you think through that. But today we're just keeping it real simple. So I've already assembled a bunch of my squares and by assembled, I mean a front piece of flannel, 
the batting in between, and a back piece of flannel. And you can see the flannel is facing outwards on both sides with the batting sandwiched between. I've already prepped all these squares, but I'm gonna show you how to prep a few more just to demonstrate because I want you to see kind of each step of this um, as we go. So let's take a look here. You can see my stack of flannel squares, 10 by 10. And I have just the way that I cut them out of the fabric, um, I have them facing the right side out. So you take it, you open it up, you center your batting. Remember your batting is one inch smaller on all sides. My flannel squares are 10 inches. My batting is eight inches. So I have one um, inch all the way around. And I have six squares here that I'm gonna prep with you. And then we'll talk about how we're gonna sew. So um, how I do this is sort of assembly line, cutting, pinning, sewing. And we'll get more into the sewing, but what I did this morning is I cut six squares of each of the kinds of fabric. And I have five fabrics, so that totals, um, I'm sorry, I cut 12 squares, which will equal six blocks on the quilt. And I just cut fabric, cut fabric, cut fabric until I had all the squares cut, okay? So um, like I said, sort of assembly line cutting. Then once I had those, then I cut all the squares of batting, eight inches, eight inches, eight inches, until I had my 30 squares of batting. And then I just went through and I actually was watching a show and, um, oh my goodness, have you guys, I think it was out last season, but I've been watching A Million Little Things on, it's on Hulu. I don't know who originally put it out. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Anyway, sidetrack, I was watching a show, cutting, pinning, and assembling, and I left just a few squares to do this here with you. So you can see how I'm just putting them together, the batting's in the middle, the flannel faces out on both sides. This is technically a quilt as you go quilt because we don't have a front and a back. We just, as we sew, the quilt is created. Um, so I will show you each of those. And this is where your long pins come in handy. And you can see I'm just putting one pin in the center of each square to kind of hold it together. Okay, so now I have the rest of my squares completed and I have the start of my quilt that you guys can see. So what I need to do is lay out my pattern or my quilt so that I can lay out the next row um, to get the order. So I, I usually do this on the floor, okay? So I can really see what I'm doing and really lay it out. But all I'm doing is shifting the blocks over one. So on the end here was this print. So that will become the first one. And then um, we go back and we start the design over. So we're looking for a green and then a small animal and then a red square and then a large animal. Okay, so now I have those laid out and then what we're going to do is we are going to go over and quilt an X on each of these um, squares. So I'm gonna try to layer them and I probably will double check because I have sewed this wrong before and then you, it's a lot of picking to undo it, but I'm, I'm gonna quilt them and then sew them together in a strip to add to this quilt. But we'll probably check to make sure the order is correct after we do the quilting part so that we don't have to um, pick anything um, in the end. Okay, so now um, for this, I'm just using my regular sewing machine with a regular straight stitch and it has the normal stitch length, which is 2.5. I'm not really adjusting anything. And your stitches will be seen. So you wanna set a color for both the bobbin and the top that you like. And I'm using navy blue because I think it um, 
coordinates and works really well with the fabric that I'm using um, and adds just another layer. So, but you can use whatever color you want, but know that you will see your stitches, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is chain all these squares together, sewing diagonally across each one. Now you could sew, stop, sew, stop, and finish each square individually. But when I'm doing 30 squares or 60 squares, depending on the size you're making of this, I find it easiest just to chain them all off and sort of, again, mass produce them. So I'll show you how I do that here. And you also do not need to backstitch because we're going to keep sewing around this square and um, it just makes it easiest if we just keep sewing. So you don't worry about backstitching and I just keep going and um, that's my method. So I would love to hear while I'm doing this if any of you have made this sort of frayed flannel rag quilt we looked before. It's a popular style. I didn't invent it, but I have been sewing it and writing about it um, this style for many years. Um, but it's, it's just a really fun one to sew because it's quilting, but it's not really quilting. And you guys know me, I'm not really a quilter. I'm a sewer and um, I don't really quilt. Okay, so now I've sewed off one square and then we sew on to the next. Again, sewing diagonally across. Okay, so Gertrude, I'm just winging it. I don't use a guide. I'm aiming from one corner to the next. If it has a print on it, sometimes that's helpful. You can see I'm actually using kind of these diagonal squares as I sew across them. Not all my lines are perfect, but you can just sort of straighten back up as you get to the other corner. So I don't use a guide. I don't use any lines. When I'm sewing later and will use a one inch seam allowance, of course I use the one inch guide on my sewing machine. But for this diagonal, I just sew right across kind of keeping my eye on this opposite corner and that helps me to keep it straight enough. So if you don't feel like you can be straight, then you're gonna wanna use a um, water soluble um, or air soluble, probably water soluble because the air might disappear too quick. But use a disappearing ink pen and trace diagonal lines on your squares so that you really can get pretty straight lines across these because you will see your stitching. So um, something to keep in mind, but again, I've never done that because I feel like it is straight enough when I'm just aiming for that opposite side. So um, so there we go. Okay, Vanessa, a t-shirt quilt. Okay, so I've only made one and I'll tell you my experience as a what not to do for a t-shirt quilt. So. My husband had all these t-shirts from college and I didn't really want him wearing them anymore because they were ridiculous. So I said, let me make you a t-shirt quilt. So I took all the t-shirts and I just cut out the design on the front, not thinking about the sizing. So in the end, all of my pieces of shirt were different sizes. And then I had to piece it together into a quilt and it was super annoying. So my suggestion would be cut each shirt the same size and then I did use a light interfacing on the back of each shirt to keep things from stretching out as I was sewing. So I would uh, cut them all the same size and use interfacing. Those are my two tips, two tips. Okay, so now we have these squares all chained together and we need to sew them the opposite direction. So I'm going to begin with the first one and sew across. And then um, at some point you need to cut the squares apart and I like to do them just cut one at a time because I'm trying to keep them in the order that I want to sew them together. So by doing it one at a time it does help me to know okay which one is going to get chained on here next. It was this red buffalo check and you can kind of feed from one into the next and then once I get it started I will cut them and again, if I don't see your question, please just ask again, because sometimes I'm looking at the machine, and if the questions scroll by quickly, then I don't catch it. So just ask again, or maybe someone else will jump on and comment and um, respond to your questions if I am not able to do that. So 
I did forget to put the link to my pattern group if you're not part of the Life So Savory um, pattern group. Um, just search Life So Savory pattern group on Facebook and you can find that. And that's a great place to show off all the things that you're making as well as ask questions. So if you're in the middle of making something and you get stuck, it's a great place for either me to help you or I have such a great community of others who are supportive, kind, uplifting, and are willing to help others out. And often other people will get there and answer questions before I even get to it. And I love to see you guys helping each other out with sewing questions. Um, and it's a great place. So if you're not part of that group, there are 15,000 of us there who are wanting to help you out. Um, and you can show off what you're making and then get tons of people to um, see it. So that's just really a fun place to join. So um, find it on Facebook, answer the questions that I ask, and then I will go through and accept those requests um, later today. So just something fun for you to check out if you're looking for another sewing community on Facebook. Um, so you can see sometimes how because I'm feeding one into another, the fabric gets stuck down in the machine and I have to lift the presser foot and before I keep sewing. But again, we're not back stitching, we're just sewing straight across the squares on the diagonal to stitch as we go and quilt as we go these squares. Now, if I was um, going to be soaked to be doing the whole quilt um, in one go, which uh, normally I would. I wouldn't be um, doing row by row. I would do all the squares, then I would lay out the whole quilt, then I would sew the rows, then I would row the rows together. Sew the rows together, okay? Um, but I want to show you more of the process, so I'm slowing down and doing part of it before I've done all of it. But normally what I would do is I would take my pile of squares and I would do this chain through the whole pile, all 30 of them through, then I'd turn it and X them the other way, all the way through before I even went on to step two. Um, but today I'm going to sew the row, the next row so that you can see because we're not gonna be sewing the whole quilt together, okay? So that's normally what I would do is I would take all of these pieces and um, sew them together first. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these apart and I'm laying them back down on the quilt that I've already started. Okay, um, to make sure that it's the order that I want. Thank you, I can't, who, June. I love this fabric too and I wasn't gonna make a Christmas quilt. I actually went to Joann's to buy, um, to buy, flannel because it was on sale last weekend and I was thinking of just buying something. I often like to sew like baby blankets and I just have them on hand. And if someone we know has a, a baby, I can just give a gift. Um, so that's what I went in mind. And then I saw this cute Christmas fabric and I thought, okay, we need a Christmas quilt and um, it will look cute on our couch all winter season, Christmas season. Actually, this could go winter too. We might leave it out. Um, and then I'll sew. Whoa, sew the baby quilt um, later. So like I said, I am prepping for It's So Easy. Um, this is one of the projects that I'm gonna be sewing when I go film um, in December. And I did not have a finished one of these quilts left in my home. I've given them all as gifts. So um, it was time to sew another one. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I am um, uh, pinning the squares together because we're gonna sew them. And what I'm doing is lining up the raw edges and then just putting a pin in. And um, what you wanna make sure of is that all of your raw edges are facing up the same direction. Because you can see on this quilt, we actually have exposed um, edges and all of them need to be on the same side of the quilt. So, and just before you, I went live, I was sewing this together and I had sewn all the pieces this way, the right way, but when I went to put the rows together, I sewed 
it the other way and so I had to pick it out because the seam allowance was facing down instead of up. So, well, well, well. Yeah. So seam allowance is facing up on all of these pieces and I'm just putting a pin to hold them together. So here's our going to be our next row, pin together and I put again, I when I pin the fabric, all of the raw edges are facing up the same direction. And if you're making a pattern like I am, you wanna make sure that they're facing the right direction so that the pattern makes sense when you lay it next to the rest of your quilt, okay? So then what we do is we take our quilt back over to our sewing machine and we start sewing the rows together and we sew each two squares together with a one inch seam allowance. So remember how, and my machine has a one inch um, line on it. If yours doesn't, you're probably gonna wanna put a piece of tape or something so that you can sew with that one inch. Um, we cut our squares 10 inches and we cut our batting eight inches, okay? So, yes. So we are going to have a one inch seam allowance because that is where we cut and fray and then come up with a beautiful frayed um, quilt. So someone just asked, will it have frayed on one side? Yes, so I make all my frayed pieces on one side and then the back side is smooth and um, you, after you finish sewing, you cut it and then you wash it and then you dry it and you wash it and you dry it. All those little flannel pieces get so cute and fuzzy. And if you click through the link in the description of this video, not only will it give you all the details for sewing this quilt, but you will also see, um, you will also see a finished result. So like I said, I don't have any of these currently in my home finished. I've given them all away and I need a finished one to show an example for filming in December. So that is why one of the reasons, in addition to loving this fabric, why I am um, making this Christmas version right now. So you might notice, maybe you didn't, but I am back stitching these, this part of the quilt. So when we just went through and sewed the X, I didn't back stitch, I just chained the pieces all together. Well. When I sew the rest of the parts of this quilt, I do backstitch um, just to reinforce the seams. We end up cutting most of these, so it doesn't really matter. You're gonna cut through all your backstitching, but just while I'm working through it, I wanna make sure that the seams hold together nicely, so I do backstitch, and it's, real, it's easy on this part because I'm not chaining it together. So, um, all right, so we're sewing our one inch seam allowance. My machine has a line. If yours doesn't, then you can just go ahead and place a piece of tape easy on the side of your machine to be able to sew that one inch um, seam allowance. And it looks like I'm running out of thread here on my top. So we'll keep going and um, hope we can get a little bit farther before I have to replace that spool of thread. So you can sew, your, you can have your squares be any size, large or small. And I've made several quilts where my flannel is eight inches and my batting is six inches, which gives you a smaller square, which means one, you need more squares, um, but two, you have just smaller squares and it does look nice. But these are larger squares. Again, my flannel was cut 10 inches and my batting was cut eight inches. So here's the backside with the no seam allowances. And then here's the front with the seam allowances, okay? Or this is the back with the seam allowances and this is the front without the seam allowances. It's up to you to decide what's the back or the front or whoever's gonna use this, the back or the front. Um, but so then I would sew all my rows together. So I would have my six rows um, before I moved on to the next step, but we're gonna move on to the next step so that, um, I can demonstrate how we're putting it together, okay? So then you sew all your rows. This will be have six rows of five squares each. And again, I would lay them out on the floor as I completed each row, just to double check that my pattern was how I wanted it. 
I have two rows already sewn together here and we're gonna add the third. And after we add the third, then that will be halfway done. So you can kind of get an idea of what this is gonna look like. And after we sew this row together, I'll show you about the clipping, which is the fun part. So double check your pattern looks good. Double check again that your seam allowances are all sticking up the right way because like I said, when I sewed these two together, I did it wrong. So the first thing I do is I take my fabric and I'm gonna line up the um, seams because I want my squares to be as crisp and neat as they can be on the non-frayed side. On the frayed side, you aren't even gonna notice the where the squares meet because there's just too much going on with the frayed fabric but the rest of it you will notice so i also open up the flannel seam allowances um instead of folding them to one side you want to open them up so as you sew we're distributing the flannel equally around that point of four so then i'll go to the next one and i will line up those seams open the seam allowance and pin and then I go back and put one pin in the middle now if you're finding that your squares are really off and they're not lining up in the middle then you'll have to um, go back and take a look do I know the name of this fabric uh, let me see if I can find it on the salvage I just I just bought this at Joanne last weekend so if you have a Joanne fabric by you um, you should be able to find this um, right now. It's current. I don't always sew with current fabric. It just says Snuggle by Joanne. Um, yeah. Oh, this one says Super Snuggle by Joanne. So I just think it's, yeah, um, Joanne, yeah, it just says, Designed exclusively for Joanne. So I don't know the name of it. Um, it's flannel. It's right now at Joanne Fabric in their flannel section, which was on sale, but um, if it's not on sale, you could probably use a coupon, which might be a better deal in the end. I never know if I should go for the sale or wait for the coup or just use a coupon. But um, but it was currently at my my Joanne. So look on look online or look at your store and see what you think so I went on Halloween which was fun because people were all dressed up at the store which was fun okay so we're continuing to pin across please let me know if you do have any other questions um, so Sally I am making a lap size quilt um, which could also be like a crib size quilt and I have one yard of each and you saw I still do have extra fabric so it could be slightly larger than what I'm currently making, but the yardage is listed in the post. Let me, um, I can take a look at my computer and see, but if you click through the link that's in the description of this video, it will take you to the tutorial that I wrote about this kind of blanket. And um, you should be able to get all the specifications there but I can take a quick look too. Here, I'll see if I can find it. Okay, so it's called the Easy Rag Quilt Tutorial. There's also a video and a photo tutorial up, but you're getting a video right now, so you probably wanna take a look at the photos and um, where are my fabric? Okay, so I said for that one I used a yard and a quarter of only three colors. So that would have been um, only about four yards total. And this one I'm making five yards. But this one I'm cutting my squares bigger. And then that one I cut my squares a little bit smaller. So it does include a little bit of math um, to probably figure it out. But like I said, this will be half the quilt. So you can see that it will be easily a lap size um, when we're finished. 
and that was with one yard of five different fabrics. So it depends on sort of what design you wanna make and how you're working it out. So you can always sketch it out and then do your measurements 10 by 10 or eight by eight, depending on what your squares are gonna be, um, and then figure out how much fabric you need to create the size. So if I wanted it to be say 80 inches wide and my squares, um, so I'm cutting them 10 inches, but they only end up to be eight. So that means I need 10 squares across, which really 10 by 10 is 100. So you can think I need 100 inches by 100 inches, how many yards of that, okay? So um, you could go on and on. So can you make bags that we were asking, like using the same sewing technique? Is that what you're wondering? Um, I, you could make anything. Actually, what I was considering as I was using this fun Christmas fabric was how pretty would it be to make a um, Christmas tree skirt with this kind of um, pattern and either leave it square, you know, make a square out of it and then, or cut a circle out of it after you cut the square. So that was my thought. I thought it'd be really fun um, to do that. Um, as I was using it at a Christmas fabric. So my thread is just normal thread, which is, what is normal thread? Cotton, polyester. <laughs> this is 100% polyester. So this is Guterman, I use that. Or you know, if you use the, this is Coates and, Coates and Clark is also 100% polyester. So I'm just using the fabric or the thread that I use for all my other fabrics. Um, and sew in like, like normal. Okay, so now we're sewing rows together. First we sewed the squares together, now we're sewing the rows together and using the same one inch seam allowance. And when we're finished with this, there'll be one final major step that I will demonstrate and then it'll just be a matter of you figuring out what size squares you wanna sew, how much fabric that will take. I would suggest for your first one, make a lap size or make a crib size and then figure out, okay, what worked, what didn't work, what am I gonna do different next time? And it will also give you an idea of how much fabric you're using. So that if you do wanna create a larger one, you'll know how to figure out what you need for fabric um, to create a larger size quilt. So that would just be my recommendation. I don't think I've ever sewed anything larger than a twin. Um, using this method, but you totally could because they do turn out so cute every time. You will see if you look in the post that I wrote about this several years ago. One, my daughter who's now huge and <laughs> tall and a seven-year-old is tiny. And two, you will see that I, um, I made it when I was living in Hong Kong. And when I was in Hong Kong, we did not have a dryer. I only had a washer. So my flannel did not fray as beautifully as it will when I have a dryer. Okay, so just a, just a thought. Um, you don't really wanna hang dry this. It will fray much nicer if you Put it in the dryer so before I gift this or use it myself after I have it all cut up which is crazy to say I'm gonna go cut up this quilt but I am I will wash and dry it two to three times to get the maximum fray out of the flannel okay so that's just um, kind of how I do it and now we're ready to check out the cutting part so let's swing this back over here and I want to find the scissors that I want to use for this. Sorry, of course, they're in a drawer with lots of other things. Okay, so when you're gonna be cutting lots and lots of little, what do I call them? Little pieces, little, little cuts. 
Spring-loaded scissors are super helpful. So these are spring-loaded and they're also tiny, which helps me to not cut too much because if you clip your seams, you have to go back and re-sew it. And do I know that from example? Yes, I do. I also thought I'd show you. So while I was um, looking in that drawer to find um, the scissors, I found the project that I'm currently crocheting. Isn't it so cute? It's a wide brim sun hat and I'm gonna make it as wide of a brim as I can until I run out of, um, run out of yarn. But that's my current um, crochet project. <laughs> and not at all relevant to what we're doing today, but I found it in the drawer. Okay, so take your um, scissors, spring-loaded are best, and you're gonna lay out your quilt. So here's the front, and I'm gonna keep going, okay? I'm gonna definitely add on the other three pieces to this. So, um, <laughs> uh, so I'm not gonna finish. So after you get all your rows together, in order to keep the, the edges of the fabric um, from fraying too much, what you do is you go ahead and you stitch a one inch border, opening up the seam allowances, all the way around the perimeter of the quilt. And then you snip that perimeter so that the edges are also frayed. You could finish this with, um, you know, satin quilt, but maybe quilt binding as well, however you want. But if you're gonna fray it, you first need to stitch the one inch around before you cut it. So I haven't stitched the edge yet, so I'm not gonna cut any of those, but what I am gonna do is cut some here in the middle um, that I'm finished sewing on all the edges, and then um, you'll just kind of see how, how it goes. So um, again, you don't wanna cut the stitches, because if you do, you're gonna have to go back and uh, re-sew those. So where the seam allowances are sewed apart, I go ahead and clip those edges first so that then I can clip the four layers of fabric together. And I make snips about a half inch apart. And this is a great thing to do while watching a movie. <laughs> Just put this baby on your lap and go to town once you're finished. Um, but, you know, here, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna cut a few of the pieces. I'll cut around this square to show you. Um, but again, don't cut your stitches. That's where these sort of small scissors are helpful. I find if you clip each row, if you sew that, oh, that's probably a good idea too. I just don't wanna clip too close to the edge because I still have to sew the perimeter. So um, you can definitely do this in batches. If it's too hard for you to clip the whole thing and your muscles, your arms are getting too tired. But that's again where these spring loaded is super helpful because if I have to clip all this with traditional scissors and I don't have these springs to help it pop back open, it is a lot harder and a lot more physically exhausting. So um, if you can and get spring loaded ones, you'll find that it does make it a lot easier to clip around. So, all right, what are you gonna make with this sort of frayed flannel design? A tree skirt, a bag? I just think there are so many possibilities that maybe I've never considered that would be so fun to make. So I'm excited to check out and think about what could I make with this? Let's close this window completely because it is driving me crazy. But you can see here, so I have um, clipped around this entire square and the batting is not here because our batting was smaller. So the batting is just in the middle, not in the phrase. You should have four layers of flannel on each side and then more in the corners where all those pieces are together. And then after you finish the quilt and after you finish all the clipping, wash it, dry it, clean your dryer, maybe even your washer. It really does, um, it really does make a mess. I'll, I'll just say it. it, makes a mess in your washer and dryer because all these frayed flannel pieces get 
everywhere, but wash it, dry it, wash it, dry it, clean your machines, and then maybe wash it and dry it one more time to get a beautifully frayed fabric. And I will be posting pictures of the finished product of this next week so you can see how beautifully it did fray. And so you can make sure you follow me on Facebook or other social media or check out lifesosavory.com to see the finished product. But someone asked about, um, did I wash the fabric beforehand? No, I did not because I want maximum fray the first time I wash it. So I wanted these fibers loose and not shrunk and I want it to fray as I go. So do not pre-wash your flannel. Just cut and sew and go with that. So Heather, you might be able to wash it in a delicate bag, but I think the agitation is what makes it fray. So I will take the trade off of having to clean out my machine, I think, to have the beautiful frayed fabric. So yes, smaller squares would make a beautiful coordinating pillow cover. Um, or even if you did just a traditional quilted pillow cover without frayed flannel, you could really get some variety and use the same fabrics for home decor or um, bedding or whatever you're, sorry, I've got light on my face, you're using this for. But I hope you were inspired today by this frayed flannel quilt. Again, I'm half done. I'm gonna keep going and finish this and I'll show you the rest next week. And I'm excited for that. And then I get to show this project again when I film It's So Easy and we're gonna demonstrate with um, more baby-like fabric um, doing the same thing. So thank you for joining me today. I'm excited you were here. I'm so glad you joined me and I hope I will see you again next week. I'll be back on at 3 p.m. Eastern for another great sewing tutorial. <laughs> Looks Canadian, maybe. Looks just kind of winter to me, but um, I live in Colorado, so this reminds me kind of of mountains in Colorado and the lights on my face are so weird. Anyway, Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.